We always wanted a real adventure, so I wanted the music to be lively. I, I wanted that sort of buoyance. The first thing Kelly said was, you know, this is a total reboot, and we really want to make this fantastic. We want to make it magical. Uh, we want to transport the audience to a new world. When Kelly first started showing me concept art, my jaw dropped because I was like, wow, this doesn't look anything like I thought it was going to be. It's this new place where flowers are alive and rivers are alive and it all has this magical uh, world to it. And so then I, that's when I said, you know, well, how can we make that affect the music? The music in this film is really part of the ride. The music takes you on the highs and lows and the emotional ups and downs, and it should. It should be as if the music is on that same roller coaster you're on when you watch this movie. I think my wrestlers are coming up. When you think of Smurfs, quite honestly, you think of Lala's. You think of them singing that song that they sang in the TV show. And so I put together a choir that was a mixture of uh, adults and children. Getting that blend of voices that sort of give a little hint at the La La song that we've always heard before and blended it in with the tribal, more cultural side of the girl village. It all came together in kind of this symphony. The first thing that I noticed uh, when Kelly showed me the movie was there's a section where one of the girl Smurfs jumps down out of the tree and lands on a mushroom drum and it and actually bounces on it like a timpani head. That could be a great sound. What if we had something that went boom like that and then Right next to that was a scene where one of the Smurfs actually takes this flower and blows through it. And at the time, there was just a regular horn there. But I said, well, what if that was an interesting, unique instrument as well? So I started getting this concept about the kinds of things that could be made into instruments. These are girls that live off the land, and there's a sort of, they have a completely different culture than our boy Smurfs village. Smurfy Grove is a place where it's a little more primitive. They make their instruments and their all sorts of implements they use are found objects that they put together. Right away I started thinking about unique instruments that come from that world and I started also saying, well I want it to be otherworldly, but I don't want it to feel like anywhere in general. We decided to sort of make our own Smurf instruments or instruments that feel like, you know, they, they belong in this world, like they came from this world. You've got all kinds of ethnic instruments. I think we used Chinese membrane flutes, a little bit of duduk from the Middle East, and I used quite a bit of penny whistle, which is very Celtic. There's also a uh, charango, which is Argentinian. By putting one of each instrument all mixed together with the choirs and everything like that, it just feels broad and worldly. It feels like it's from all over the world instead of one part of the world. Someplace tropical, someplace like a jungle, but you don't know exactly where you are and you can't really identify what culture this might be because it's something new. Because the movie was so legitimately magical and emotional, then the music could be as well. You'll see that the music plays, I think, a bigger part of the film as an experience than most do, to basically give people an hour and a half where they're really feeling like they live in Smurfland. Who wouldn't want to live in Smurfland, right? If you are a Disney fan, listen up. Did you know that Pumba the, in The Lion King was the first character to fart in a Disney movie? Just fits in perfect with the character, don't you think? I wonder who the second character was. <laughs> yeah, so I'm the first uh, to fart in the films now. So, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to also click the notification bell. See you next time. Next part. <laughs>